Yeah, I told you it was going to be an exciting show. Brand new music. The brand new CD is out. And uh, they're on tour in support of this record, In a Room Full of Blues. From the band Room Full of Blues, who have been going strong for 50-plus years. And the lead vocalist, who you heard on that track and all the tracks on the record, Phil Pemberton, is going to be talking to us right now. And uh, he's really excited because they're coming to town Friday at the Fairfield Theater Company and then Saturday night the northwest corner of Connecticut at Infinity Music Hall. And we welcome to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut, Phil Pemberton. How you doing, Phil? Doing great. How you doing, Joe? Uh, I'm doing fine. And, uh, man, your voice is sounding good as ever on that record. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now, uh, is it officially out this week? It, it actually comes out on the 13th, the night we're at Fairfield Theater Company. Okay. So a lot of CDs in tow. Somebody selling the CDs, I'm, I'm sure. And uh, absolutely, I'm not. I'm not sure that's a lucky date, but hey, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got a gig, and you got a. You know, we were talking before that uh, you've been playing the Fairfield Theater Company, which is uh, several times, and you love that venue. It's it's intimate, and the fans get into it right away, right? It's a fantastic place to play. I mean, we're. I think you're spoiled in Fairfield because there's. There's a lot of places that have closed down for live music yeah. or they don't put it on as often as they used to. And you have a great venue there that's doing nothing but expanding. And, they're, and they, they treat the artists really well. All the mm -hmm. people who work there are fantastic. you got a good thing going on. And, and it's really nice because we were like star for... For blues music and i'm not putting down the clubs up in hartford and everything but you know uh, i got i got friends uh, ronnie baker brooks who's coming to town and you know we're always like yeah we got to have a spot around here in fairfield theater company and and the warehouse have just made it a stop for the alligator family and room full of blues well trust me we appreciate it when when we find a venue that we lock into mm -hmm. like i think we do it at fdc um, we want to just hold on to it. We we have so many people who love to see us there in particular because it's just an intimate feel. You're, you're almost on top of the band, you know? Mm -hmm. And people still get up and dance. I, I always tell people, even if someone tells you to sit down, just if you want to get up and dance, go ahead. You know, right, right. we outnumber them. Because <laughs> that feels great for, for when you're looking in the crowd. I'm sure it's a big, big charge for you. Absolutely. Well, just to get the energy back and forth, Mm -hmm. It really makes a big difference. Like people, I think people come out and think the band is just going to put on a show, but a large part of the show is the energy that we get back from people. That that pushes us, and then it pushes them, then it pushes us. It goes back and forth. And at a place like FTC, you really get close to the people. You're almost sweating on top of them. I hate that sounds gross, right. actually, but yeah. <laughs> you're almost right. sweating on top of them, and it's really. It, it, it's really powerful. It's much more powerful than, you know, watching in an arena somewhere. Exactly. Um, Phil Pemberton is my special guest, the lead vocalist with Roomful of Blues and their website, roomful.com. In a Roomful of Blues, the uh, official release of the new record is this Friday night at the, uh, excuse me, at the Fairfield Theater Company. And the next night you'll be up in uh, Infinity Music Hall, another great venue, a lot of history there um, in the Northwest part of the state up in norfolk yeah yeah norfolk and uh let's talk about this record i mean how, how many uh, years in between this one and the last one the last record came out about six years ago okay but um since i've been in the band i've been in the band for 10 years mm -hmm. we've come out with three records and the last two we really didn't introduce any new music the first one i was on was a album called hook line and sinker right which we picked. We picked a lot of our favorite tunes from different er different times and different artists. The last record we did, Hook, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Forty Five Live, was kind of a a bunch of Roomful songs. Some that they had covered, and some that were original Roomful songs from the different generations of the band. But this is the first record that's almost all original. I think we threw in two covers just for the hell of it. But they're obscure stuff that the band just likes to do. But the other 11 songs are original songs that we all wrote together. Um, so we're really excited for that, mainly because there's so many good songwriters in the band, you know? And we're going to get into a track right now. And, and the, this is the early favorite on, on my listen for this one. And, and you co-wrote this song, You Move Me, 
Oh, oh this <laughs> Chris. This is, for, this is for my wife, so I'm glad you're playing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love this. I mean, you know, you know, on first listen, this, this was a big standout for me. I knew I had to play it when I knew you were coming on. So uh, you wrote it with right Chris, on. your guitarist, you. and uh, the, the songwriting process between the two of you on this one. How did it go? It was it was fairly simple. Chris and I write a lot of stuff together, but this is the first one that we've actually written together and put on a CD. And it went with me sending him, you know. The lyrics I wrote, I sang them in a certain way and sent them to him and said, can you can you do something with this? I'm a very hacky musician when it comes to guitar and piano. So I, I didn't want to interrupt what he would do. So I pretty much just sang them into a recorder and sent them to him. And he said, you know, this sounds like kind of like a stack sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And he put some he put some chords to it and sent it back to me. And then, uh, you know, I listened to it a little more. Then we got in the studio together and just recorded a couple tracks, like a rough demo track. And uh, that's how that's how it all came together. It was pretty much a, just a back and forth, you know. Yeah, we're going to listen to it right now here on WVOF. Joe Kelly and Phil Pemberton, Room Full of Blues, coming to town Friday night at the Fairfield Theater Company. This is a song from the new record in a Room Full of Blues, written co-written by uh, Phil Pemberton. This is called You Move Me. Yeah, You Move Me from Room Full of Blues, setting it off with a new record in a Room Full of Blues and co-written. And the voice on that is my guest right now, Phil Pemberton. Yeah, when when it's faded out right there, I heard stacks right there. So that was cool. Yeah. So That's uh, what I heard when I when I was trying to write it. And let me just say that is the that's the first song I wrote for my wife, who's been asking me for like 20 years we've been together. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> to write right, yeah. She's like, why haven't you written this song for right. me? <laughs> You know, lovely British accent, and and I finally put one on a CD. Where where'd you meet your wife? One. Where'd you meet your wife? Uh, I actually met her. Uh, she came over to work in the United States, and I was playing a gig at this small little club in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And some crazy English woman came up to me. Oh, okay. And she was crazy. Okay. Not my not my wife. Right. Okay. There was some crazy English woman who came up to me and said, "I know someone you would love." And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to meet women. That's what right. I need in my life." <laughs> and uh, she brought her the next week, and I've been with her ever since. We have two kids. We have a lovely home together, and uh, this this crazy woman who I don't even remember her name was right. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So so you're having a happy life and making music, doing what you love. And let's go back in time. Uh, you've been with Roomful of Blues for ten years, and uh, you've had yep. your own band. You've toured all over the place, um, mm -hmm. but you. The lead singer of Room Full of Blues. How, how did that come about? That actually came about in a, it, a weird way. Um, I had my band going, playing in the playing all over New England. We went out of the country quite a few times, too. But I had one day when the keyboard player I was playing with, a guy named Bruce Bears, who plays with Duke Robillard and a bunch of other people, um, he couldn't make it. He was out on tour with Duke Robillard. And we had this kid named Travis Colby sit in. And I didn't know Travis. Uh, my guitar player knew him and said, oh, he's a keyboard player for Roomful of Blues. I went, oh, he must be good then. Great, yeah. After the gig, he said, hey, I'm, I'm getting married next month. Would you play my wedding? And I said, ah, I'm not really a wedding band. That's not really what I do. He goes, no, no, I'll play blues and soul and whatever you just played, and that'll be great. That's what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. So I got up to the wedding, and there were about 100 people. And... Nine of those were the current member or were the former members of Room Full of Blues. Um, and I found out that the singer was going to be leaving. He just didn't, he didn't want to go on tour. He didn't want to be, you know, going on the road too much. And uh, over the next three months, I kept getting phone calls like, hey, would you be interested? Hey, do you think maybe you'd want to? Hey, do you? And it was from different members of the band. <laughs> so after like three months, uh, Chris Vashon called me up and said, hey, I heard you might be interested in. I guess they all liked what they heard that day, and uh, right. they haven't been able to get rid of me since. Yeah, yeah, great, great, uh, <laughs> and this is that—that's a great story on how things, and that's a lot of things happen in the music biz like that, right? Yeah, it's just someone knows someone. Like our current, uh, a couple of our current uh, players mm -hmm. came in that way. Um, they just had played with someone in another band somewhere or in another state, and they're like, "I know this guy who, you know." Our drummer is going to be leaving. I know this guy who, who would be fantastic. And it always works out that way. Just we know someone, we try him out, and it turns out he's a great player, you know? 
Uh, I'm looking at the schedule right now. I'm jumping ahead, but I got a spot. Um, I might make the trip up there to Saratoga Springs at Cafe Lena uh, Saturday, April 25th. So you know, That's a very cool place. Very cool place. Yeah, we love Saratoga Springs and Room Full of Blues, and they'll be right here in town, right about five minutes from the radio station here on Sanford Street, the Fairfield Theater Company this Friday night. Official CD release night at uh, Fairfield Theater Company Stage 1. And uh, showtime 7.45 and then tomorrow, uh, excuse me, Saturday night, 8 o'clock at the Infinity Hall, Norfolk. And uh, that is on Saturday night. Have you played, uh, I believe they have one in Hartford too, right? They have one in Hartford as well. We we tend to play, um, every six months we play at an Infinity Music Hall. Oh, okay. Uh, they, they, they circulate us from Hartford and then we go up to uh, Norfolk the next time. All right, before we get six into six months, it, we're at one of them. Right, <laughs> hey, they they love what you do, so that that's great to it hear. It seems to work out. So, <laughs> I got to say hello to uh, a few of our listeners. They've been hitting us up on Facebook uh, up in Montreal, Quebec. Christiane Lambert and Jaive Tremblay uh, from up in Quebec in Montreal area, and you know they love the blues, and they've gone to Mount Tremblant, the Blues Festival, and uh, a Hunzik Park. Great and, festival. Yeah. And the jazz festival, so you've hit them all, I bet. Right on, and there's a uh, there's also what's up there, uh, Trois Rivieres. Oh yeah, that's we've right, quite yeah. a bit. Right. So Montreblanc, Trois Rivieres, we've played recently in the last couple of years. We've played a few times, mm-hmm. and uh, Montreal Jazz Fest was just before I got in the band. They had been up there. Yeah, so it's remember. been a little while for Montreal Jazz Fest. If you're listening, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, let's hook room full of blues for a, for a special time up there. Hey, I know they used to have the blues stage, and then. The band would go probably go to like a smaller club, club soda and play. Yeah, and yeah. So, so that was real nice. Hey, we're gonna get into another track, and um, you guys delve into some uh, topics on here, which which really hit what's going on today. We got phone zombies talking about people <laughs> married to their phone, and then carcinoma blues, um, which uh, I think we're gonna get into that right now. Tell tell us about. Is there? There's got to be something behind the story, right? There absolutely is. Uh, Chris Vashon, our band leader and uh, guitar player, he has a very good friend. We'll just call him Captain Bob. Okay. But Bob okay. is a, has grew up with Chris. They both used to play in bands together off and on, and, and Bob became a, a ship captain down in Florida. And uh, over the last few years, he developed cancer. Mm-hmm. And his way to kind of work through the treatment and stuff that he was doing was he was working on his songs and he would send them to Chris and the two of them worked, you know, from Florida to Rhode Island on these songs. There's a, there's a few of his songs actually with Chris on the CD, but carcinoma blues is actually his story. And it's told from the point of, uh, Chris watching him go through this. Oh, okay. Uh, Going through radiation treatment and going through all this stuff. So we thought it was important to put on it, it, to, to honor Bob, who's still with us, by the way. He did very well in treatment, mm-hmm. but fantastic guy and really good songwriter. Right, right. So, uh, like I said, we wanted to make sure to put it on the CD. Phone Zombies, actually, I was in a studio with with Bob and Chris. I was supposed to work on some other songs. We were going to lay down some basic tracks. And they said, oh, listen to the song we just wrote together. And it was it was Phone Zombies. And when they played it to me, they went, oh, yeah, we just wrote this. We're not sure what we're going to do with it. I was like, let's record it. Let's record it tonight. Right. <laughs> so we actually recorded it that same night, and uh, and that's what you're hearing. You're hearing the, a one-time vocal that we uh, we just kind of banged out because I said, "This is we ought to put this out. Right. And they weren't even sure they were going to do it, but they did. So between the two of them, it's it's some good work between Chris and and. Captain Bob. That's right. Captain Bob, <laughs> continued good health. And we're going to play Phone Zombies right now. Uh, and then we'll come back Thank and uh, say goodbye. But uh, this is Room Full of Blues. They're in town Friday night at the, uh, excuse me, Fairfield Theater Company. Saturday night, Infinity Music Hall. This is called Phone Zombies. That's right. It's it's kind of tough to put that phone down. But when you're at uh, Room Full of Blues on uh, Friday night at the uh, Fairfield Theater Company, you might want to try to put the... Uh, the phone down and, and stuff. And hey, let me ask you as a performer, uh, Phil Pemberton, sure. our lead vocalist with Room Full of Blues, with the cell phones and everything, people recording 
the shows, taking pictures, posting things on YouTube, has it changed the way the audience uh, reacts to your set and vice versa? Well, yes, yes and no. I mean, we we always see the phones out there. We always see them pop up. Like my personal preference is, I've been to a lot of great shows, right? Outside a room full, and I'd I'd rather watch the show and and enjoy the show. But I know a lot of people, you know, like to post it and say this is where I am, and I I'd, I'd almost prefer they don't, but. Mm-hmm. It's, there's no stopping it, so yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm happy. If, if that makes them happy, that's great. <laughs> the last time I saw Prince was at the Mohegan Sun in, in Connecticut, and the guy in front of me, I looked down, and he's watching Monday Night Football on the phone. I'm thinking, wow. either he See, had that's, big, that's crazy. If he either had a big bet on the game or, or just he's just not in the right place to watch a show. Well, you can always watch a game later. It's like this is – imagine especially like Prince. Yeah. This man's in front of you. It's like watching Mozart in his day. It's like you're really just going to tape it with your phone, or <laughs> you don't want to just experience it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. I think it's more of an experience. You have to feel music and to see it perform live. I mean, there's nothing better than that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I, I don't I don't get it myself. I don't right. mind people doing it, but the, the the phone video just never comes out as good. Yeah, and it doesn't. The sound quality is never as good. Mm-hmm. So sometimes someone will post, "Hey, I saw a room full." on Thursday night somewhere, and it's like, eh. It, yeah. it just doesn't sound as good. Right, you know? right. Hey, uh, before we get into one final track, um, something I wanted to ask you about. You grew up on so much great music and listened to great music. I was reading some, some interview you did uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, yeah. who were some of the artists that you had in your record collection and uh, you still have around the house? Oh, man. I, I, I've listened to quite a few uh you know, it's 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 a lot of classic artists. It's a lot of people like Ray Charles, mm-hmm. uh, Al Green, you know, Otis Redding, um, and some people that those people turned me on to were people like O.V. Wright and Howard Tate. It's people I didn't know in my small little suburb of Bellingham, Massachusetts. Um, but later on, when I got into playing and I got into hearing these other people, um, People would people would say you've never listened to Obie Wright. You have to listen to Obie Wright, and I'd pick that up and just be astounded that I'd never heard it before. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I always have that going. But I, a lot of world music around my house. There's a lot of uh, old classic blues stuff. We listen to everything pretty much. There's also rock and pop. My wife is English, and she brings over all that Euro pop stuff that she grew up with. Um. So I listen to some of it, and some of it I completely dismiss because it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. <laughs> exactly. I let her know. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go in the other room. And, right, you know. Yeah, right. But it's that's her taste. That's right. what she yeah, grew up on. Exactly. Know? I've DJed polka <laughs> concert, so and, and I'm like a I'm like a funk, blues, rock, jazz guy. So yeah. <laughs> So I got to thank. It's all good stuff. That's right. Yeah, and uh, I got to thank my special guest, the lead vocalist for the last ten years, and we hope uh, twenty more or so years. Room full of blues. Their brand new record is called "In a Room Full of Blues." If you're not able to get out to the shows this weekend at the Fairfield Theater Company Friday night and uh, Infinity Hall in Norfolk, Connecticut, Saturday night, you can go to roomfull.com and also all the online outlets to order the. Uh, CD in a room full of blues, and it's been an honor to have you on, Phil. Hope to see you on the on the road this uh, this year. Absolutely, it's been a pleasure to talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're gonna go out with a Doc Pomus cut uh, that Room Full of Blues does great. It's called Too Much Boogie. So thanks a lot, Phil. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate.